Yes, they call island thing, teeth white when my smile and thing. Summer ads on my solo. Like the man panda polo. Time for get a while and thing. Right now. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are in the kitchen making some Sunday dinner. I have some wings that I already seasoned here. And I also have some oxtail that I'm gonna cook. So for today's video, we're not gonna just break down the nitty gritty of making oxtail because I have a full video that I'm gonna link down below. But right now, I'm just gonna start by just frying up the oxtail and getting them brown. So the leftover liquid that I have from the oxtail marinating, we're gonna put that to the side until later on. We're gonna allow the oxtail to get a little bit brown on this side for about seven to 10 minutes, then we're gonna follow up with the same process. I already went ahead and turned the oxtail over to the other side so it's been about 20 minutes since it's been getting done so the liquid I'm just now pouring it all over the oxtail this is just all the seasoning herbs and spices that I used to season the oxtail this is how the oxtail is looking right now with all the seasonings herbs and spices that I just added in we're definitely gonna need more water for the oxtail to properly cook so I have a pot of water that's on the stove right now boiling and then we're just gonna pour it over the top of it Whenever I cook oxtail, I always add hot water to the pot instead of cold water or room temperature because I find that the hot water allows the meat to tenderize even more. Now we're gonna allow the oxtail to really cook, so I'm just making sure that each piece of meat is gonna be properly covered by water and that nothing is gonna be sticking or burning. So this is why I'm just going through with my spoon and just making sure that every piece of meat is gonna be underwater basically. With the water added in, this is how the oxtail is looking. Don't worry about the color right now. We're gonna add some color back in later on. So now we're just gonna cover it and allow it to just cook for about 30 minutes. Then we're gonna come back and check on it. It's been a little over 30 minutes right now and as I opened the pot, I noticed that the water has dried down quite a bit. So now I'm just gonna mix around to make sure that there was no sticking or burning going on. Because the water has dried down quite a bit, we're gonna add some more water. Throughout the process of cooking oxtail, you wanna make sure that you keep adding water as needed so that your meat comes out tender and is not hard in the end. Now I'm just gonna cover the oxtail and allow it to continue cooking for about 30 to 40 minutes before I come back and check on it. In the meantime, I'm gonna make some sauce for my gravy and also to add a little bit of color back to the oxtail. Starting out with some browning, ketchup, soy sauce, and last but not least, some cane sugar. Now we're just gonna mix to combine all the ingredients together. The full measurement is gonna be down in the description box for you guys if you wanna follow along. Besides the color that this sauce adds back into the oxtail, this also gives it a nice rich texture and flavor. It's a little bit on the sweet side, so it complements the oxtail very well. Once you add the sauce in, you can adjust it to your taste level. If you want a little bit more sugar, you could go ahead and add that. Whatever ingredient you want more of, you can definitely add it in. So once the sauce is added in, this is how the oxtail is looking. I'm gonna cover it and allow it to cook for another 20 more minutes before I add in my butter beans. Today I'm using one can of Caribbean Rhythms butter beans. I already went ahead and drained off the excess water that comes in the can, but there's also a little bit of water left, but that's perfectly fine. 
Now I'm just stirring the beans, combining everything all together to make sure that everything is gonna be fully cooked in the gravy. If you've made it this far in the video, please go ahead and subscribe and turn your post notification bell on. For the beans to cook thoroughly and our gravy to thicken up a bit, we're gonna cover this and leave it cooking for the next 30 minutes. This is how the oxtail is looking right now. The gravy has definitely dried down a bit. You can go ahead and do a taste test to see if it's tender enough. If it's tender enough, you could go ahead and turn the stove off. If not, then you could definitely just leave it on medium low to just get a little bit more tender. I just also wanna thank you guys for getting my oxtail video to a million plus views. You guys are super awesome and I'm forever grateful. Now let's get started on the jerk wings. Using Walker's wood, of course. So right here I have a glass dish that I just lined with some foil paper. Now I'm gonna just get started assembling my wings. Now the wings are all ready for the oven. This is after the first 25 minutes of the wings being in the oven and as you can see, it's spraying its own water so I didn't need to add any water in the beginning. If you guys would like to see my full jerk wings recipe, I'm going to leave that in the description box below. All the measurements, ingredients, everything like that is going to be in that video so definitely check it out. Now I'm gonna put the wings back in the oven for another 25 minutes. Look how beautiful and charred the wings are looking right now and they're not even done yet. So right now I'm just flipping them over to the other side because I'm gonna put them back in the oven to finish. So I went ahead and poured out some of the liquid that has been accumulated and now I'm just using some of that same liquid that's left over to put over the wings. I don't like my wings to be super dry. I want it to maintain some kind of moistness. And here we have the final results of my jerk wings. Looking super delicious. Nicely charred, just how I like it. Now, let's get started on the rice and peas. At this point, the peas has been cooking for about an hour and 30 minutes, so it's basically ready for the coconut milk to be added in. Gray's coconut milk is my favorite, so this is what we're using today. I also have some scallion and thyme with pimento seeds in here. Full recipe is gonna be down below for you. We're gonna allow this to cook for another 10 minutes before we add in our rice. Even if the label says you don't have to wash the rice, I always wash my rice. So right here, I'm just going through it with room temperature water to just rinse through the rice maybe two or three times. I would also add some butter in usually, but lately I've been on this whole mindset that less is definitely more. Once I've added in all my ingredients, I'm just gonna lightly mix everything all together. Be very careful when you're doing this because the pepper right now is very soft and you don't wanna open it and have your pot be super spicy. So just go through and combine the rice with the peas and everything. Now we're gonna cover the pot and allow everything to start drying down. 
Using a fork, I'm just going through and fluffing the rice to see how much it has cooked. If it's not a lot of liquid that's in the pot, then that means that the rice was steaming very well. So we're just gonna go through and then do a taste test just to make sure that everything is cooking well. So the rice just needs another 10 minutes to go, so over low heat, I'm just going to cover it and allow it to cook for 10 more minutes. So once the rice is finished, this is how everything is looking. I have my jerk wings right here, and I had went ahead and put the oxtail back on the fire just to get it nice and hot to serve everything. So here we have it guys, Sunday dinner is served, rice and peas with oxtail and jerk wings, some avocado on the side, cucumbers, and tomato. Thank you.